Well, hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I really need to thank Primary Arms for reaching out to me and offering me their brand new classic reflex sights for review. So, thank you very, very much. If I sound a little bit nasally, it's because I got a bit of a cold going on, but it's nothing to worry about. Anyway, what do we have here? Well, very clearly, we have two reflex micro sights. Well, technically, one's a micro, one's a mini. What's the difference? This is a 21 millimeter window, this is a 24 millimeter window. I decided to put both of these optics into one video because there isn't going to be a whole lot of footage we could really showcase to make it warrant a single long video. As a result, these will be side by side throughout the majority of this video. So this way, if you're curious about one versus the other, you'll be able to decide what's best for you. With that, let's see what you get for your money. And speaking of money, these are going to be about $150 each. So it might sound like a lot of money, but ultimately for that price point in the micro or mini reflex sort of category, there isn't a whole lot of really good stuff. You have to really bump it up to about 200 bucks before you start getting anything else. Namely, their SLX series, which has a couple of key features that are a little bit different. And with that, let's check out these boxes. There isn't a whole lot to really go by. There are only a 3MOA dot. All the information you're going to need is right there on the back. And that's it. Opening up both boxes shows that we have an owner's manual for both of them. There really isn't that much to go on with this. So I'm not really going to go over it too much. There is no sort of special features with these. These are designed to hit a certain price point. So as a result, it's going to be lacking in certain things like, you know, auto brightness and whatnot. It's going to have just on, off brightness controls and uh, your windage and elevation. It's really nice of them to include some high quality thread locker. You get two little microfiber cleaning towels. For the micro, you do get some mounting screws. And then you get the actual optic itself. I do like the fact these come with covers. It's a rubbery sort of silicone texture and they fit on here fairly well. We're going to take a look at the micro first, which is, as you would expect it to be, very, very small. Now, because the fact this thing is so small, the battery is going to be exposed. We do have a seal around the entire battery compartment, but you have to make sure that your pistol is perfectly flat and clear, because if not, you could get moisture egress in this if it's not locked up 100%. So, something to take note of. Moving on to the mini, removing the cover, which again fits on here fairly snug comes off pretty good, reveals that this does come with a pick rail mount, which is really nice to see. So right off the bat, if you're between these two and you want to mount this on top of a carbine, a rimfire, something like that, this is the one to go for. There are two Torx headed screws right there in the middle. And when you remove them, it reveals an open battery compartment at the bottom as well. These both take standard CR2032 batteries and the battery sits in there fairly well. In fact, you have the exact same compartment on both of these, which is nice to see. And the only real difference between these two is just how big they are. Going back to the micro, on the left-hand side, you do have the up or positive button for your brightness control. And on the right-hand side, you have the negative or the down button. What I really like about the placement on this is when you go to shut it off, you have to squeeze both of them for a few seconds in order to shut it off. And this whole process is a lot easier than what you get on the mini. On the mini, the both buttons are on the left-hand side, as you can clearly see, up and down and you have to depress both buttons simultaneously, like so. It's a two-handed ordeal. You could try to do it like this, but it requires you get a real janky hand position. If you try to do it with one finger, you could get it sometimes, but it's not necessarily guaranteed. I kind of wish they just put both buttons on this side because it not only is a lot easier to shut off, but it's also a lot easier to, okay, I want to increase brightness, I go over here. I want to decrease brightness, I go over here. It's just a lot easier for my brain to pick this up as opposed to something like this. Having the two side by side really goes to showcase how much larger one window is versus the other. But is three millimeter really that much of a difference? But you could also see that the frame around the lenses is a little bit thinner on the micro than it is the mini. I know it's getting a little confusing, so I'm just gonna go left versus right from now on. The dome on the right does give a lot larger view through it as opposed to the one on the left, but ultimately it's a much larger border and it's something that you're going to be noticing a lot more of. While we're back here, shifting these around, you do see that they, move, they both move the grain on the desk a little bit, clearly the one on the left a little bit more than the one on the right. And even though it's slightly washed out, you can see there's very little tint to either glass. Starting with the micro, we do have the battery installed and it is on. It looks a little bit larger than a standard 3MOA dot, but it seems to be round, which is nice. And it's nice and easy, again, to get to these controls and adjust the brightness very easily. Come on, there we are. And again, to shut it off, press and hold both for a few seconds. 
and it will shut off. Stepping up to the Mini, and again, you can clearly see we have a nice round dot in the middle, and we can very easily adjust the brightness on this. Though, again, I do wish the buttons were on either side. I know like this, it's you just have to remember which one's which, but now to shut it off, now I gotta do that sort of hope and pray that I get both of them. Let me get, come on, where are you? There you are. Press and hold, and then it'll automatically dim down. Now, these are supposed to be very lightweight, and they really do feel absolutely minuscule. Starting with the Micro first, you can see it comes in at about 0.67 ounces, which is a little bit heavier than what the box states at 0.56. I think that is because when they measured this, they measured it without the battery. Voila, there you go. So, you have to take the battery weight into consideration. Oh no! Bumping up to the Mini, with the battery installed, we crest it just around an ounce. With the mount and the screws, you can see we're just shy of two ounces, which is extremely lightweight. Now, I would have a 6MOA Viper to put on the scale, but I'm lending that to a friend so he could use that on his pistol to see if he wants a red dot or not. However, I do have a Holosun SCS, which is set specifically for a Glock MOS. And though this is still very small and made out of titanium, it's still a couple of tenths heavier than this Micro. Now, comparing these two head to head, might happen, but these are two very different sort of optics. This thing comes in well over $300, doesn't have a battery, is completely sealed, comes with solar charging, automatic brightness, different reticles, you name it, a lot. But this is still more than twice the price of that. Not only that, but this is specifically set up for a Glock MOS. A couple of quick final points before we get behind these things and run them is how does it sound or how does it feel to adjust the wind digit elevation? Well, again, starting with the micro, that is completely smooth. There are no detents on this whatsoever, but it is pretty tough to turn. So I feel fairly confident that this thing won't turn under recoil. Windage is exactly the same. No noise whatsoever. Again, absolutely silent. However, the, like I said earlier, the damping on this is pretty nice. It requires a fair amount of pressure to have to turn this thing. So I wouldn't, again, worry too much about this thing coming undone and loosening up under recoil. Nevertheless, I would wish that there was some sort of detent or at least maybe a little bit more pressure to turn this thing just to be safe. But I do understand that if they make it too tight, they'd worry about people stripping this out constantly. So it's a give and take. So I just cut my nails, but it still doesn't mean that we can't see if it passes or fails the nail test. Well, you could hear the anodizing. It's a little rough. And you can clearly see that it is grinding down part of my nail. However, we can wipe it off very easily. Going back to the micro. The anodizing on this is actually a little bit smoother. And as you can see, it doesn't really rub the nail off. Again, though, it cleans up very, very easily. Looking at both these from the front, you can clearly see we have a little bit of domed glass going on and a little bit of red tint. Nothing out of the ordinary for most reflexes. And obviously, yes, you can see the emitter from the front albeit a very dim one, even though these are set up at full brightness right now. Enough chit chat. Let's get behind these things and see what they actually look like to use. As I previously mentioned, the micro will be on the left and the mini will be on the right for the remainder of this video, except for when I'm doing comparisons. This is just a quick speed drill of me using these on my Glock 17 MOS airsoft gun. Yeah, it's not as realistic as you could possibly get, because you know, shooting it with a real gun would be a little bit better, but it's still a great fundamental builder. It's still great practice to get the muscle memory in and just some trigger time in general. Despite the fact that the micro is smaller than the mini, I have no problem getting behind it. In fact, running this in multiple occasions down here and in other such areas, I actually prefer the micro to the mini. I really thought the size of the window would play a bigger role than what it does. In fact, for me, I think the bigger key here is that it's just the thinner profile just of the housing there. around the glass. The micro is smaller than the mini in that regard. Both dots are both very clear, bright, sharp, and both glasses have about the same level of tint and distortion, which by the way, is not very much. They both function perfectly fine, but personal preference aside, I think I'd stick with the micro. This thing's really and now here is nice. some just pure, raw, unadulterated stupid. video for you. Pew, pew, pew.
Pew pew! My very primitive setup means that I have to use a band to keep the optics of the rail. Pew pew! Pew! Pew pew! Pew! Pew pew! 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 Pew pew! Pew pew! 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 Pew pew! Pew! And I even managed to clear the stage with the micro a little bit faster. As I said before, I think it's just the overall size of the micro that I prefer over the mini. There's nothing wrong with the mini. You might prefer it the other way around. You might prefer the mini to the micro. Oh my god, all these names are going to get me confused. But as you can see here, they both have roughly the same amount of tint, the same amount of distortion, and equally bright reticles. And in case you're wondering what footprint they're running, the Mini is running a standard RMR, and the Micro is an RMSC. Both of them are rated for 40,000 hours battery life on the medium setting, which is, should be around 5 out of 10 on the brightness settings. Honestly, the reticles on these have been more than bright enough for all the environments that I put them through, and they were very easy to pick up regardless of where I was. But let me show that to you firsthand. Going in a garage and in my living room to now out in the bright sunny daylight, we'll really be able to put this to the test. But first off, let's really take a close look at the distortion through these things over these power lines. Power lines are set at about 30-35 yards away, and there's very, very little movement when we pan across them. It's honestly a really good looking image, one that I wasn't ex quite expecting. Because a lot of the micro red dots that I've seen either have A, a lot of tint, or B, a lot of distortion, or C, sometimes a combination of both. But bringing these up and down on the plane across these power lines, you'll see there is very little movement in both of these optics. I honestly wasn't expecting it to be this good because I've seen just so many other performances that just weren't anywhere near as great as this. And a lot of people would say, hey, some of these pistol optics need to have a little bit of magnification or distortion to them, which I completely don't agree with. Why the hell am I running this in conjunction with the magnifier? For a couple of reasons. One, to see if the dot still remains a dot, and two, to see maybe you want to run this with a magnifier. And guess what? They both magnify extremely well. For the $150 price tag that these both come in at, I am painfully impressed with how bright, clear, and sharp the glass is on this. There shouldn't really be any problem as far as sharpness because it's a single piece of glass, but bad glass would still be bad glass and could hinder the image quality. Here, there really isn't that much of a difference. And for those of you wondering, this is of course the Holosun HM3X magnifier. They work very well together. And because this is a really small optic, you have a little bit of leeway as far as how far away you can have it from the magnifier. They just both work really well together. Moving to my home away from home, we're here for a couple of reasons. One, to give you all a really good understanding of how these are going to look and appear on targets at 50 yards, which is what those targets are on the back, as well as some targets on the right, which are about 25, 30 yards from where we're currently standing. There honestly isn't a whole lot I can showcase with these optics to bring the point across whether they're good or bad. It's a pistol-mounted RDS. There isn't a whole lot to it. It's a very simple little mechanism. And these are particularly simple because, again, there's no auto off, there's no shake awake, there's nothing fancy about them. And if that's a trademark name, I apologize, nothing fancy, but eh, it's just, that's a saying, and that's just the way it is. But these are just really, really simple. And I like that they're simple because if I was to carry a pistol, which hopefully I'll be able to do soon, New York State, please don't F me in the A on that one, but we'll find out hopefully soon enough. I wouldn't want something that's going to be overly complicated, because when you have something that's complicated, things can technically go wrong. But at 40,000 claimed battery hours at level 5 of 10, and 5 is pretty visible to the naked eye in most cases, that's quite a long time to just leave it on and not have to worry about it. The only thing is, if you're the type of person that's going to worry about if this thing is going to shift if you remove it to change the battery, well, I'm going to be doing a test on that very soon in a separate video. Now, there isn't a real way for me to do a tracking test, so just to show you how well these things will adjust, and if you could see the dot at the far extremes of the window, well, the answer is it adjusts perfectly fine. And yes, the dot will be visible from one extreme to the window to the next. I couldn't do it with the micro because I don't really have a solid base for that yet. Hopefully when I'm... hope. <laughs> 
if and when I ever get the time to make a Mark IV version of my mounting rig, I'll have something that's going to be permanently set up at the front for pistol mounted RDSs. But until said time, this is as good as I got. But both optics zeroed perfectly fine on my airsoft gun within a couple of shots. Now, this is just another visualization of showing you what the distortion will look like at this distance. Again, it's really, really minimal in the grand scheme of things. Every single pistol mounted red dot sight that I've ever seen, got my hands on, shot with, has some sort of distortion to it. And these are on the lower end of the spectrum. And the tint is barely noticeable. And that's perfectly fine compared to something like a Trigicon RMR, which must be what your pet fish sees when it looks out of its fishbowl. Bringing back what I showcased already in the unboxing is the Holosun SCS. Both of these are set up at the exact same distance, and despite the fact they're fairly similarly sized like I showcased earlier, the window in the primary arms micro is larger, primarily because the frame around it is much thinner than what you see in the Holosun. Now this can be taken in a couple of different ways. Maybe the primary arms isn't as sturdy and robust as the housing from the Holosun, it probably isn't. But the Holosun also has more distortion, a little bit more tint, but just a smaller view through it. As similar as these two optics are, they're anything but. The Holosun is more than double the price, comes with shake away, comes with auto off, auto brightness, and multiple reticle options. It also comes in a titanium housing. The only thing it doesn't do is fit on most standard footprints. It's designed only for the Glock MOS. Hopefully Holosun changes that. Moving up the size scale to compare against the Micro is the Burst Fastfire 3. This one comes out of my archive from many, many years ago. This is actually my brother's pistol RDS, which I think is on his choppa? I can't remember. Nevertheless, as you can very clearly see, we have a lot of tint to the glass. And where it's currently mounted is set up for a carbine, not a pistol, so the window's gonna look a little bit bigger than what we see with the primary arms. There is a little bit more tint, but less distortion, but it does cost more money, about 50 bucks or so, they're like 190 to 200 dollars, again, rough pricing. However, the Burst does have auto brightness, which is a pretty nice feature that I found to work pretty well, and they are fairly well made. But if you're on a tight budget, that's why you're going to go for the primary arms. Other than that, the Burst is fine. For my last comparison, I dig deep into my archive once again for the Holosun 507. This is a Mark I, not an X2. So there is more tint and distortion on this as opposed to the X2 versions. People gave me a lot of shit for the 509 review that I did, but guess what? They came out with an X2 like a month later, and it was vastly improved over the Gen 1. Honestly, the Holosun products are leaps and bounds better in most regards. They feel really well built, they last a long time, they have a lot of really cool options. Solar panels, basically infinite battery life, shake awake auto brightness, sometimes different reticles, and just, <laughs> they're really nice for the money. But the money is still twice the price of that at the primary arms. And that is where I'm going to now get into my final thoughts on these two little primary arm pistol RDSs. Enjoy me LARPing around my garage as I give you my final thoughts. If I had to choose between these two, it would be the Micro. I just think it's a much nicer little optic and a little overall package. I love how small and compact, yet how big the window is, and just how overly painfully useful it is. But there's nothing wrong with either of them. It's just a matter of personal preference. But guess what? If you don't have the proper cut on your receiver, then you're going to be forced with one versus the other. These fit in a very good price point. $150 is right in the sweet spot between the questionable subpar really cheap ones and the $300 plus dollar, let's say, Holosuns. Let's say you don't need all the features that the Holosuns give you, or you want something with a little bit slimmer profile. These are a really nice little segue into that little spot that you might be looking for. These things operated perfectly fine for me. I had a couple hundred rounds through my airsoft pistol, granted an airsoft pistol, but they gave me no problems. I'd have no problems putting these on a range toy and really beating them and getting to know them. Once I built up enough trust, if they gave me no problems, putting these on a carry gun wouldn't be out of the question for me. They worked that well, but they might not work well for you in that regard. But just understand, if you're looking for either A, more features, or B, maybe better build quality, despite how well these are built, you're going to have to spend a lot more money. So it's entirely up to you and your budget. But if your budget's going to be around $150, I think these would be worth a consideration.
And on that note, a huge thank you from Primary Arms for making this review possible. I didn't expect to be using my Airsoft Glock this soon to review more pistol RDSs, and I was very excited to do so. But the real thank you must go to all of you, my wonderful viewers. Thank you for making my 2022 absolutely wonderful. Here's to an even better 2023. See you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support my channel but don't want to join either of those, I completely understand. But you could still help by using my affiliate links in the description below, and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.